Over 15 years ago, cell phones were mostly used to make phone calls on the go and send occasional text messages. Today, people can tell their smartphones to play games, watch videos, get driving directions, pay for groceries, board a plane, and a whole lot more. Apple's Siri and Amazon's Alexa enable us to do precisely that without so much as having to touch a screen. For that, we owe thanks to Professor Raj Reddy. Dr. Reddy led the development of the first real-time continuous speech recognition system in the early 70s. Prior to Dr. Reddy's work, speech recognition had been limited to recognizing only short strings of words in isolation. By the late 1980s, Dr. Reddy and his team had constructed a system that could recognize the voice of any person almost instantly. Professor Reddy's lab at Carnegie Mellon has had over the years the largest concentration of graduate students working on speech recognition that have taken that research into the products we all use today. From his humble origins growing up on a farm in India, Dr. Raj Reddy became a true pioneer in the field of artificial intelligence and an inspiration to all of us that have been fortunate to learn from him. Now we are honored to welcome Dr. Alex Acero to walk us through Dr. Reddy's innovation and impact as a pioneer. Every day that we look at the news, there is something about AI. But back in the 60s, no one even knew what AI was. My name is Alex Acero, and I'm a senior director at Apple. I run the lead the speech recognition, speech synthesis, language understanding, and dialogue for Siri. And all of these technologies that we take for granted are something that Rush had the foresight decades ago to get started. We all say, well, what is the future? Well, let's talk to Rush. You can get a glimpse of what the future looks like. Why did you become interested in speech recognition? Why did I do it? It was curiosity. Can we actually make computers hear and see and talk? You started a project that really changed the field on continuous speech recognition. Before there was discrete or isolated speech recognition. What is the difference between the two? Why is it so much harder? When you're speaking one word at a time, there are gaps, then you can essentially do pattern recognition on each of the words. But if you're speaking continuously, there's a famous sentence, where were you a year ago? There are no stops, no fricatives, no nothing. It's all vo you know, vocalized sounds. There, there's no way to say where one word ends and where the other one begins. Like when you're listening to a, a, a language that you don't speak, and someone is speaking a sentence. You don't even know how many words are there because you don't know where to segment them. Exactly. And at that time, it was not clear how to attack the problem. We now know, if you say, I don't know where the word ends and where the other one begins, you say, okay, maybe it ends here, it ends here. You try all of them. And that's what you do with puzzles. Today, everyone is using the iPhone to dictate messages. Was that in your mind? No. When you started? Not at all. You know, we were desperate to see if it could recognize digits. <laughs> now, in retrospect, after 50 years, you can see if you can speak to computers and, the, and then carry on a dialogue, you can do all kinds of things. I spent 20 years in Microsoft Research and you were in the Technical Advisory Board, and I remember fondly whenever you would come like two times a year, three times a year, we'd have a dinner, and then there would be time for Raj's predictions about the future. Tell us, give us some predictions, what's gonna happen? One is, we will kind of get over the language barrier. I don't know if you remember the book by Douglas Adams, where he talks about babble fish. What do you expect me to do with that? Stick it in your ear. What? That's only a little one which will translate whatever is being said in any alien language in the galaxy. Excuse me, Ford, but what exactly am I doing with this fish in my ear? It's translating for you. Look in the book under Babelfish. The digital Babelfish will happen. We'll finally get to a point. I can be speaking in Telugu and you can be speaking in Spanish. 
and we'll be able to have a conversation with no problem. So by the way, that tells us about language models. Yeah. Now everyone is talking about generative AI and these large language models, but I used to joke that back at least when I was a PhD student in speech recognition here at Carnegie Mellon, we were using language models. I thought they were large already. Right. So maybe we should change the name to gigantic or ginormous language <laughs> models. Oh, that is true. We have come a long way. <laughs>